Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about communicating with the server uh, from the client side. So generally to communicate with the server, you'll want to do so because you want to either get some data or you want to add new data to your database without refreshing the page. So for example, if a user clicks on a button, it can get updated data for that user's profile, or if a user clicks a save button, it'll update their information in a database somewhere. And you may want to do this without refreshing the page. And so AJAX allows you to do this. Uh, AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So you don't really have to worry too much about the acronym, but basically to, do, to perform AJAX calls within the browser, there's something called XML HTTP request. Uh, that's an object built into the browser. And so it provides functionality for getting, and re for getting data from a server or posting data to a server via that object. But we're not going to be using that JavaScript object directly. We're actually going to be using jQuery because it's built on top of that object and it's really easy to use. So to get started, I have this really simple HTML file here with uh, I've included jQuery and we're going to be writing our JavaScript code in this scripts.js file. So in here I have um, an empty document.ready function and I forgot to mention I have this style CSS file which is just which just has a CSS reset. So we're actually going to be sort of, so there's two, generally there's two functions you want to perform, getting data from a server and putting data to a server. So the first one we'll cover is getting data. So I actually set up this file here, so coderbyte.com API test data.json. And in here I have, so this is a JSON object. Uh, it's in JSON format, so it looks basically like a um, JavaScript object, except I have this func, this function called func outside of it, and it's passing this object as a parameter into it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm testing, I'm going to be taking this data and I'm getting it from this local file. So they're on different domains. This exists on coderbyte.com and this exists as a local file on my computer. And if I'm trying to get data that doesn't exist on my domain, I'm going to get a cores issue. Uh, cross origin request issue is what it stands for and I'll post some links below this video so you can read up more on that but basically you're not allowed to do that unless you specify permissions within here unless I have some server running that spits out this JSON file and it says okay the um, this list of websites are allowed to access this file so to get around that I'm gonna be doing something you'll see in a second called JSON P uh, which uh, is in a format like this. So this is the data we're going to be accessing from within our page here. So let's actually open up the code. And so here we'll do, we're going to call the, J, the jQuery function called Ajax. And Ajax takes a bunch of parameters. So the first thing we'll do is speci we'll specify the type. So the type is either get or post. So we're going to be getting data from a specific URL this is the URL we're getting. Whoops, sorry. This is the URL we're getting from. Uh, data type will be JSON P. JSON P callback. Uh, func. So this is the function here. And so what it's doing is it's going to get this whole data object from this file and then we're going to evaluate this function. So then we're going to get this data and we want to do something with it. So we call we pass in the success per um, key function data. Oops, data. And then we can also pass in error function. Okay. So if there's an error, we'll console log error and on success we'll console log the data. So this is all you need to get the information from this file. Uh, we're evaluating it as JSONP which is slightly different than JSON. Uh, the callback function is func to evaluate it and then on success we're going to print the data. So now if we reload our page we can see that we get this object and we see count three countries as an object 
and people is an array. So now the great thing about this is we can simply take this data and put it into our HTML. So here P, so let's get, so what we'll do here is when we get the data we'll append it, we'll append it to our HTML. So we'll get the P element and append uh, the data. So we'll do, so when we append the data, whoops, inner, that will do HTML. Okay, so we actually, so we're getting this data, but we have to convert it into some readable format. So you can see here when we console log data, we get a bunch of things, we get a bunch of things, so people is an array and each has country, country code, age, and name. So what we'll do is we'll get people and we'll filter through them and print each individual person's name. So here, let's just make sure we do con uh, data dot people. If we reload it, we get an, uh, uh, an array of three objects. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll loop through this array. I is less than data dot people dot length. I plus plus. And now we'll add it into the HTML here. So let's actually create a container where, the, where this will go. Let's create an unordered list and give it an ID of people. So now we're going to get the ID of people and we're going to append a list element. We're going to put some data here, so data.people, and we're going to get the ith person, because we're looping through it, data.people i, and then name. And then plus, let's close off the list element. Okay, so now when we reload it, we should see Bob Smith, Jane Wilson, and Jake L. So these are the people we're getting from this data. So let's console log it, just to make sure it's all correct. So now you can see this page on reload, so the initial page load, it gets this data. But we can easily get this data um, on some sort of interaction. So for example, let's change this into a button. Let's give it an ID of a click and then get data. So now we're going to, this function is going to run only when we click on this button. So let's change that. So ID click on click. It's going to call some function. And that function will ev um, call this Ajax function and it will get the data and place it into the um, HTML. So on click, get the data and then put the names into the HTML. So now if we reload this page, get data, and you can see the page didn't refresh, the names were just automatically entered in. So get data, and here they are. And so there's other data being entered here. So like the people, each person has a country code, and this country code corresponds to some item here. So country code of one, you can look up countries of one, and you get USA. Uh, here you get countries of three, so countries of three is UK. And you can print this data and do whatever you want with it. So this is a really simple example uh, of how to get data that's uh, hosted on some other sort of, um, on some other website. And this data can also be coming from a database. So for example, on your own website, if you had website.com slash um, data slash users, you can get data, that function, that file can run and get data and then it can return a JSON format. So here, when you reload this page, it's getting the same data over and over, but you could have a server written, which we'll cover in the next uh, course, um, the full stack development course. You can write a server so that you can pass in some sort of parameter, like data JSON user equals um, Bob. And then it'll return the information only for Bob. 
or you can say users equal all and you can get all the users. Um, you can do something like this and we'll cover this in the next course. Um, and we'll also cover how to post data. So in this tutorial, we I don't have a server set up to take in information and update this file. But to do that, you would do something like this. You would do type post. So for example, let's just say we had a button here and it said update data and you had some form here where that you can fill out. So when, when you click on update data, you would change this Ajax call to be to look something like this. Type post, the URL where you want to post to, so you would have something like website.com slash user slash update um, and then yeah so user update so you would to this URL you would post and then what data you want to update so you would do something like data and then an object so let's just say you wanted to update the name of someone you wanted to make it Daniel you wanted to update the age you want to make it uh, 37 so the data goes within this data object and then what it's doing is it's taking this data and posting it to this URL and then on success you're gonna get some sort of re re result so either you can return a message like success or you can return the updated data so you'd be able to console log your data here and you get some sort of message so this won't actually work if we run it because this this um, I don't have a server set up to take in data and update it um, but we'll cover that in the next course in the full stack development course